Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest VII, The Princeless Bride. We are now in the town of Falderall, which is a pretty strange place compared to, well, yeah, it's even stranger than Volcanics Underground. We finally got past that lizard at the beginning of the first, or the third chapter, and we also saved a hummingbird from a spider. So now that we are in Falderall, let's start going to shops and talking to people. I'm going to start with the china shop first. Well, the... The shopkeeper is very sad. There's a mask that we can interact with, but there's also a open cage. An open bird cage. I want to think these two things are related. Let's talk to the bull in the china shop, shall we? Welcome to my shop, dear lady. I am Fernando Bullforth, proprietor. Good day, sir. Oh, it is not a good day. It is a terrible day. A black day. I'm sorry to hear that, Fernando. Is there anything I can do to help? Not unless you have found my treasure. Someone stole your treasure? How awful! Was it gold or gems? No, it was treasure, my precious china bird. I love my treasure more than all the stars in the sky. She is my only friend, and now... Now she's gone. <laughs> so, the open bird cage, and... Fernando being all sad, are both related. Let's see if we can get any more information out of Fernando. Do you know who might have stolen your bird? Oh, it could have been anyone. Everyone in town wanted my treasure for his own. <laughs> or their own. <laughs> I wonder if we can talk to Fernando again. I'll go ahead and check. Fernando, how long ago was treasure taken? Just a few short days ago. But it will seem like an eternity to her. She is terrified of anyone but me. The poor little thing. Indeed. <laughs> Why do I have the feeling that we're going to pull a King's Quest 2 with the class over the Mockingbird cage? I mean, that alone kind of reminds me of that. Forgive me, my lady, but I find it too painful to speak of treasure now. And that's all we can get out of Fernando. Okay. Well, I noticed we could look at the plates. Let's do that. These things are so lovely. But I'm afraid even to breathe in here. It all looks so fragile. Well, it is a china shop. I want you to click on any of this once and get Valenice's description of it. You can't click on it again. Oh, we can click on the cage now. Your bird was stolen from your shop right out of her cage? Yes. But I was taking a nap, and I did not hear her cries. Oh, the guilt. Well, we might as well look at the mask. Pardon me, good sir, but what is the price of that lovely mask? The price is 100 pieces of gold, my lady. But I'll let you have it for 80. I just don't care anymore. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, I've no money. Thank you anyway, shopkeep. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have any money. It's not like you can get gold in this game. And that's pretty much all that we can do in the China shop. So... Valenice's face, as soon as L Chicken Little grabbed her, kind of says it all. We can talk. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! I didn't even get the chance to click on her, and she did what she was going to do if I clicked on her anyway. That was weird. There's a note on this door. Let's go ahead and read it. A little later for the Archduke's birthday party and masquerade ball. Now that sounds like fun. A masquerade ball. Sounds like something you need a mask for. We're gonna have to do what we can to get that mask. Also, there is a bird here. What a sweet little bird. Hello there, pretty. Hello, dragon bread. How can you be so rude? I'm a mockingbird, lady. What do you expect? Quick, go soak your head. Your brain is overheating. I was almost expecting Valenice to make the hmm sound like she did with the jackalope. You smell like a pair of armored trousers after the Hundred Years' War. And if you keep clicking on the mockingbird, you'll keep getting insults. Cover your face. You're scaring the horses. When you were born, the midwife slapped your mother. You must have fallen out of the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. When you were a kid, your mother had a tire leg of mutton around your neck to get the dog to play with you. Whoa, either the plague wagon just drove up or you really need a bath. Your parents tried to throw you to the wolves, but the wolves threw you back. Is that your face, or are you eating a mincemeat pie? I could go with this all day. When you were born, the midwife saved the bath water and threw you out the window. Almost expected a repeat of a joke there. If you were on fire, I wouldn't lay an egg on you to put you out. Is that your nose, or are you eating a turnip? Most babies were found under a cabbage leaf. You were found under a stinkweed. You smell so bad, even the pig boy avoids your company. Oh, man. You're so ugly, you have to sneak up on a glass of water. Was your mother frightened by a warthog when she was carrying you? Did your parents lose a bet with an evil magician? That one seems to hit a little too close to home, so I don't remember that ever happening in the King's Quest series. You're won't ask you for directions. Only your varicose veins save you from being completely colorless. How many insults does this bird have? You're so dull you can't even entertain a doubt. Apparently a lot. You light up the room whenever you leave it. You're almost as exciting as a fat lap dog right after dinner. Seriously, how many lines does this mockingbird have? Your mouth is so big you can whisper in your own ear. You're so boring your own shadow won't keep you company. The only thing that can stay in your head for more than an hour is a cold. You can't count to 20 without taking your shoes off. The only way you could broaden your mind is to put it under a wagon wheel. When there's an idea in your head, it's in solitary confinement. I almost want to stop clicking on this mockingbird. But I really don't know how many insults this mockingbird has. If you had a little more sense, you'd be a halfwit. 
Oof. Damien Sando might like that one. When you walk in a room, the mice scream and jump on chairs. The day you arrived, your father went out and shot the stork. Almost laughed at that one. You have the face of a saint. A Saint Bernard. Well, I knew where that one was going. You have a very striking face. How many times have you been struck there anyway? You must not be two-faced, because if you had two, why would you be wearing that one? Why don't you send your wits out to be sharpened? Are you going on a trip? You sure have big bags under your eyes. How many lines does this Mockingbird have? I never forget a face, but in your case, I'll make an exception. I've got two minutes to kill. Tell me everything you know. Okay. You have a pretty little head. For a head, it's pretty little. When your time comes, thousands of people will attend your funeral to make sure you're really dead. Is that your head or is your neck blowing a bubble? When you arrived, the stork flew around the house for a week before he had the nerve to drop you off. Be careful not to let your mind wander. It's too little to go out alone. Oh, dear. You have a face like a flower. A cauliflower. You know what? I'm just going to stop right there because... I did not expect the Mockingbird to have that many insults. There is the faux shop. The faux shop. Synthetic faults and unnatural treasures. I believe we've... I don't remember if we've clicked on that. We may have clicked on that before. Busy on creating a pack of lies. Back soon. Okay, yeah, we did. And now we got this guy. Good day, sir. I wonder if you might be able to help me. Of course I can help you, madam. What you need is a big jar of effervescent, a quick-acting dewberries revelant. It will cure what ails you. And please, your cookware as well. I am not ill, sir. And furthermore, I find your claim hard to believe. You do? Well, with Dr. Bulrora's gullibility tonic, you'll believe anything. It's made with so much pure hooey that it won't just suspend your disbelief, it'll make it hover in midair. Never mind, merchant. I'll seek help elsewhere. Well, with the way things going, the things are going these days, that'll be hard to sell. Anyway, what if we were to click on this? I know I made a joke earlier, or a reference rather, to King's Quest 2 and the Mockingbird cage with the cloth over it. But now we're kind of starting to hit full circle now that I'm seeing it. I rest my case. Hello, little bird. Who are you? Go away. Hush, little one. Your friend Fernando is looking for you. He says he loves his little treasure more than all the stars in the sky. You've met him? Will you take me to him? Of course. Here, hop on my finger. Hmm. Well, that's it. That's all we have to do. Well, we might as well go back to the china shop. I am surprised that the snake oil salesman didn't make a fuss about us getting treasure. Also, let's go ahead and look at treasure, or the China bird, rather. 
with the eye icon. <laughs> now that the fun's over, let's go ahead and hand treasure back to Fernando. I know someone who'd really like to see you, Fernando. Who might that be, my lady? <gasps> treasure! Thank you enough, good lady. Here, allow me to present you with this. It is my newest acquisition, and I want you to have it. Thank you, Fernando. I will always remember you and Treasure. If you will excuse me, my lady, I must go spend some quality time with Treasure. Yes, tell me all about it, my little precious one. Something tells you that Fernando is probably going to be nursing a grudge with the snake oil salesman. But Good evening, sir and madam. Do come right in. And now that we have the mask, we can go to the masquerade ball. I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to click on the Mockingbird a few more times to see if the Mockingbird has any more insults. I feel sorry for your little mind, all alone in that big fat head. Are those your ears or fly swatter? Your parents almost lost you as a child. Unfortunately, they didn't take you far enough into the woods. Didn't I meet you in a nightmare? Why don't you go hang around with a village idiot so you have someone to look up to? You must be a big cheese. You certainly smell like one. Keep those legs covered. The chicken peddler is in town. You smell like a pair of armored trousers after the Hundred Years' War. Oh, we finally saw all the insults. Well, I finally made it worth it for all of you who were probably ticked off with me for clicking on the Mockingbird so many times, I guess. Um, hmm. Well, we can go to the Masquerade Ball. But I think I'm going to save that for the next video. Let's go ahead and make a new bookmark and keep playing so that way I can keep this music playing as I see this video out. Join me next time where we go to the Masquerade Ball and see what else we can do. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!